We concluded side one of this tape by pointing out that the shift clutch ratchet had been stopped by the clutch latch or the clutch release arm, but that the shift cam was still turning because of its inertia. These two conditions of holding the shift clutch spring on the right by the shift clutch release arm or latch top to the rear and on the left of the spring the shift cam continuing to turn it top to the front results in an expansion of the diameter of the shift clutch spring. The grip between the arbor and the coils of the shift clutch spring is thus eliminated so that the arbor can no longer continue to drive the shift cam. Meanwhile, the shift cam still continues to turn because of its inertia. As a matter of fact, somebody had better stop the shift cam from turning too far. The shift cam stop takes care of that. It is mounted directly on the cam. Slide number 81. Once the shift ratchet is stopped by the shift clutch release arm, red pencil, the metal lug on the shift ratchet is always in the path of the shift cam stop, yellow pencil. Look at it this way. The release arm, or clutch latch, stops the ratchet. And of course, the metal lug on the ratchet. And the metal lug on the ratchet prevents the shift cam from turning too far beyond the point at which the spring clutch is disengaged and at which the shift cam is in its home position. We will have more about the home position a bit later. Slide number 82. It is immaterial which way we stop our shift ratchet or shift clutch sleeve whether it is stopped by the inner lug coming to rest against the shift clutch release arm for small character selections or by the outer or plastic lug coming to rest against the shift clutch release arm for capital letters. The end result is the same. We prevent the shift cam from overthrowing by using the shift cam stop against the inner or metal lug on the shift clutch ratchet a much more descriptive name for the shift cam stop is shift cam overthrow stop. We strongly recommend that you stop the tape player and take your time, whatever time you need, in order to check up on the operation of the shift cam overthrow stop. As you cycle the machine by hand, you will find that the cam does not develop the momentum it needs in order to stop against the lug on the shift ratchet. You should then simply help the cam along by directly turning it with your finger. Slide number 83. As a result of your observations, you should have noticed that the shift cam has to overcome the friction of the shift cam brake whenever the shift arm or cam follower is in the low portion of the cam. If your typewriter has a recent serial number, you will find that it may no longer have a nylon shoe on the shift cam brake. Take another close look at it on your machine and notice that the brake locks or holds the shift cam stationary whenever the operator selects small characters. If you also examine the position of the element, you should find that when the shift cam is held by the brake, the small letters are facing the platen. Now that we know of the existence of this brake, we can say that the rotation of the shift cam is slowed down or decelerated by the shift cam brake and interrupted or stopped altogether by the shift cam overthrow stop whenever the shift cam is rotated into the position which selects the printing of small characters. This position of the shift cam is commonly called lowercase position of the shift cam. The shift clutch spring is used to turn the shift cam into the lowercase position. Once it gets there, the brake is used in order to keep it there, just like a check pole would. 
Slide number 84. You should also have noticed that the turning of the cam into the position from which we select capital characters, commonly referred to by uppercase position, allows the cam follower, indicated by the yellow pointer, to fall into the dwell of the shift cam, indicated by the red pointer. This cam follower acts like a detent or a check pawl. It simply holds the shift cam in its uppercase position, from which we select capital characters. The shift clutch was used only to drive or rotate the shift cam. The cam follower checks or detents the shift cam once it has reached the uppercase position. Slide number 85. On somewhat older or on heavy duty machines such as this one here, the shift cam detent might come equipped with a tracking roller to reduce the amount of friction which has to be overcome by the shift clutch. Slide number 86. Let us now disassemble the clutch before we conclude the theory of operation for the shift clutch. First, remove the C-clip at the end of the operational shaft. Be sure to hold your finger in the manner shown in order to prevent the keeper or C-clip from flying into somebody's eyes. Slide number 87. Then remove the ratchet or sleeve and finally remove the clutch spring. Notice that the clutch spring does not come out willingly. It is simply collapsed onto the shift arbor and the friction is so great that it is difficult to pull it out straight. However, if you turn the right end of the spring to the rear or clockwise, you will find that it comes off very easily. Can you tell us why this is so? Stop your tape player while you formulate your answer. Your answer should have been somewhat like this. The clockwise or top to the rear rotation of the right end of the shift clutch spring, without also turning the left end, will tend to open the spring. Specifically, it will increase the internal diameter of the spring, thus making it easy to remove the spring from the shift arbor. Slide number 88. Now we have a chance to take a real close look at how the left or upright end of the shift clutch spring, red pencil, is held onto the shift cam retainer plate indicated by the yellow pencil. Be sure to examine this carefully before continuing with the program. Slide number 89. The straight end of the shift clutch spring fits into any one of these openings on the shift ratchet. There is no real need to have this many slots on the shift ratchet. As you will see later, the slots merely increase our adjustment margin or range. Slide number 90. With all of these parts out of the way, it becomes easy to see the brake and the shift cam detent the cam follower, the brake holding the cam in the lowercase position and the detent holding the cam in the uppercase position. By now you may wonder why all of the fuss about who holds the shift cam in position once it has reached the lower or uppercase position. Your question is a very good one. By now you know that the left end of the shift clutch spring is held by the shift cam retainer plate and that the retainer plate is permanently mounted onto the shift cam. Slide number 91. You also know that the right end of the shift clutch spring is held top to the rear of the machine by the shift cam release arm, which functions simply like a shift clutch latch, indicated by the green pencil. This latch or release arm has the job of stopping the shift ratchet or for that matter 
the right end of the shift clutch spring. It uses the inner lug on the shift clutch ratchet, yellow pencil, when the shift cam is in lower case position, and the outer lug, red pencil, when the shift cam is in the upper case position. The only way we can keep the shift clutch spring from constantly driving the shift cam is by holding it expanded or open. And the only way we can hold the spring in an expanded form is by holding both ends of the spring. If we look at the whole operation, we can say that the shift clutch release arm functions like a latch on the right end of the shift clutch spring and that the shift cam brake and the shift cam detent, the cam follower, function like a check pawl for the left end of the shift clutch spring. Let us repeat this. The shift clutch release arm or shift clutch latch holds the right end of the shift clutch spring top to the rear. The brake and or the shift cam detent hold the left end of the spring top to the front. Make very sure that you thoroughly understand this explanation. The cycle clutch or print clutch used for printing operations functions exactly in the same manner. Its parts are not nearly as visible as the parts of the shift clutch. And since the same theory is going to be needed again later on in this package, you had better review this explanation which accompanies the last two slides.